However, during the investigation and subsequent court cases for the conspirators behind the New York landmark plot and World Trade Center bombing, more information came to light about the FBI having previously hired their agent Imad Salem as an informer before the Trade Center bomb. After the first month, the case took a surprise twist with the news that a key government informant, Imad Salem, had taped his talks with FBI agents. Salem had penetrated the circle of Muslim fundamentalists, which included Sheikh Omar Abdel Rahman. Members of the group have been charged either in the Trade Center case or in a second plot to blow up other New York City landmarks. Last winter, the FBI was praised for its speed in cracking the case of the World Trade Center bombing and bringing four suspects to trial. Now, there is some evidence that the FBI may have known of the plot in advance through an informant and might, might even have stopped the bombing that killed six people. Correspondent Jacqueline Adams has the story. FBI agents might have been able to prevent last February's deadly explosion at New York's World Trade Center. They discussed secretly substituting harmless powder for the explosives, but they didn't, according to the FBI's own informant, Imad Salem. Unbeknownst to the FBI at the time, Salem recorded many of his conversations with his handlers. I'm holding 903 pages of draft transcripts. William Kunzler represents Sheikh Omar Abdel Rahman and several others charged with conspiring to blow up a series of New York City landmarks four months after the World Trade Center bombing. That case has not yet gone to trial. Kunzler confirmed newspaper reports of the Salem transcripts. In one, Salem complains to an FBI agent, since the bomb went off, I feel terrible, I feel bad, I feel here is people who don't listen. The agent replies, hey, I mean, it wasn't like you didn't try and I didn't try. You can't force people to do the right thing. There is material in here to show gross governmental misconduct. Today, attorneys for the defendants in the ongoing World Trade Center bombing case formally asked for the transcripts of Salem's tapes. Quite frankly, beyond me, why uh, now the fourth week into the trial, uh, we still don't have these materials. Prosecutors have refused to comment publicly, but legal experts say the defense may have no right to those transcripts. It's not a defense to a crime to say, if only the government had stopped me, I wouldn't have done it. So this isn't material that ordinarily the defense would be entitled to. As already aforementioned, the explosive for the World Trade Center bomb was urea nitrate. A substance such as powder would be an indication for a much smaller device, like a pipe bomb. And looking at when Salem stopped infiltrating the cell the first time, Salem himself had never stated that El Said Nosser or his cousin Ibrahim Al Gabroni strategized the Twin Towers as a desired target, only that they were talking about assassinations and multiple pipe bombings. This is primarily why El Gabroni was only convicted of the multiple bombings attempt with the New York landmark plot through Salem's testimony and not for the World Trade Center. But again, after the Trade Center bombing, Salem secretly recorded hours of his conversations on tape with law enforcement officers, including John Antasev, during the landmark plot sting. A newspaper article revealed the existence of the tapes and the Reuters news agency received written transcripts. A copy of one of the most revealing conversations between Ahmad Salem and an FBI agent named John was acquired by WBAI. In that conversation, Salem demands more money from the FBI, outlining his contributions to the agency, including a cryptic statement by Salem to the FBI. Salem says, we know the bombs start to be built by your confidence informant. Now, even the last three weeks is going to be a nice payment. I'm just telling you for the future and what the, the expenses, they just don't want to buy in on $500 a week expenses. That's all. We're well, just right. going to have to give me the, uh, you know, some of the expenses and they'll pay what, what operationally they are allowed to pay. Let me think about it. Don't think it. There's nothing to think about. Of course I have to think about it. I mean, I have... And then later on, there's, 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 there's bonuses and things of that nature. I'm just... The only thing I'm telling you different than from before is that it's not a salary. Yeah. That's the only thing I'm telling you that, that, that is different than what we were doing anyway. Yeah. Okay? And okay, let's him to go recruit Ahmad Abdu, or let's him to go uh, gonna, talk gonna... to Ahmad Abdul Sattar. Right. Ahmad Sattar, he's a good subject. He can really give you a big help. Yeah. Let's him really to give you a big help. I am, he doesn't understand everything. But well, he has to understand. He is the boss. We all running our heads around this boss, so he gotta understand this point. But uh, basically, nothing has changed. I'm well, just telling you, yeah. for, for my own sake, yeah. that nothing, that this isn't a salary. That it's, you know, 
but you got paid regularly for, for good information. I mean, the expenses were a little bit out of the ordinary, and it was really questioned. Don't tell Nancy I told you this. Or the well, way. I have to tell her, of course. Well, then if you have to, you have to. Yeah, because, I mean, the lady was being honest, and I was being honest, and everything was submitted with a receipt. Yeah. Right. And now it's questionable. It's not questionable. It's like a, a little out of ordinary. Okay. You know, the, all right. I don't think it was, if that's what you think, guys, fine. But I don't think that because we was start already building the bomb, which is went off in the World Trade Center. It was built by uh, uh, supervising uh, supervision from the Bureau and the GA. And we was all informed about it, and we know that the bomb start to be built. By who? By your confidential informant. What a wonderful, great case. Well. And then he put his head in the sand and said, oh, no, 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 that's not true. He is son of a bitch. Okay. Well. It's built with a different way in another place, and that's it. Well, don't make any risk. You know, this is, I'm just trying to be as honest with you as I can. Of course, I and, appreciate that. And as far as the, uh, you know, the payments go and everything like that, they're there. I guarantee you that, that they are there. Notice the media emphasizes that they might have been able to stop it. They then gloss over the fact that the bomb was built by their agent under FBI supervision in conjunction with the district attorney. Instead of what some impatient, soundbite-driven, independent, and alternative media researchers have done using a very short segment of the Salem tape, we've demonstrated a lengthier portion of the 14-minute recording in part as a revelation of Salem's attitude in regards for his fees and services and what other additional bonuses he may have been attempting to extract from the feds. Besides that it was Reuters who misquoted or misunderstood the specific Salem recording, taking it out of context, Jason Burmis, like haven't taken his marching orders from Alex Jones, ignored all of this and asserts that the bomb was built by Salem, but that the media simply ignored it. And that allegedly with the Salem tape, the bomb making had been supervised by the FBI and district attorney, basically making a false accusation that Salem did participate in or carried out a terrorist attack. But Burmis himself, again, glosses over the detail of the feds substituting a harmless powder for Salem. Burmis making no distinction detailing when Salem's wired recordings were made and released, which was after the World Trade Center bomb, during the landmark's plot sting and after that. But point being is that what accusations have been made in asserting an FBI role in the Trade Center bombing is primarily about taking Imad Salem out of context in case, as what Salem said to John Antisev could easily be interpreted as extortion in what Salem really meant in his poor and cryptic English since such recordings were never made to go public. Basically, as reported, that Salem was threatening to contact FBI headquarters in Washington, D.C. about the New York Bureau's failure to stop the bombing could be seen as a form of blackmail for not having paid on Met with Salem's high demands originally to keep himself in the circles of Nocer, El Gabroni, and the Blind Shake, wired as an FBI agent where Salem would have to take the stand in a trial. And more recordings surfaced again back in 2011 with the same narrative by the most unlikely of mainstream media in that the FBI could have prevented the bombing, but again, cryptically, with no indication of Salem himself physically constructing or preparing a big bomb. A man who risked everything to go undercover in a terror organization releasing new recordings showing how the United States may have been able to stop the World Trade Center bombing back in 93. However, Ahmad Salem says that the uh, feds forced him to stop his work when he refused to risk wearing a wire. Just a few months later, the terror cell brought in Ramzi Youssef. He put together the plan to set off a bomb at the World Trade Center, a bomb that killed six people and hurt a thousand more. After, Salem made his recording of a conversation with one of the, with one of the handlers. But bear with us here. The audio is not great, so listen up. If we was continuing with what we was doing, this bomb would never go off. Absolutely, but don't repeat that. It's really simple. If Salem was actually in a firm position to have prevented the World Trade Center bombing as an informant, then Mahmoud Abalima, Nadal Ayad, Mohammed Salame, and the other conspirators, still fugitive or unaccounted for at this time, would have acknowledged Salem in the Trade Center conspiracy and have gone the same lengths to prove their innocence with accusations of entrapment, just like Sadeg Ali did with the landmark plot. 
When transcripts of the tapes were leaked to the press, they showed that Salem had warned the FBI about the general outlines of the bomb plot well before the Trade Center blast. The transcript quotes an FBI agent telling Salem his agency had failed to act in time, saying, The fact of the matter is that nothing was done about it. If it had been handled correctly, we should have been able to intervene. The jury has not yet heard those tapes. They raise the possibility that defense lawyers may use them to charge government entrapment or move for a mistrial. It would have been fairly easy for the Trade Center bombing conspirators to claim government entrapment since within both court cases of the World Trade Center and landmark plot bombers had a revolving door of the same defense lawyers. Besides, what would be the point to Sadig informing Salem that he took part in a test version of the World Trade Center bomb if Salem is supposed to already be in the Trade Center conspiracy? But unraveling this mess to try to make any sense of this popular claim or urban legend of FBI involvement or them orchestrating the World Trade Center bombing apparently wouldn't be the sort of thing that the defense would like the public to puzzle and try to bring clarity. Nor is it a sensational enough narrative for the short attention span of fringe conspiracy theorists, particularly if they are lazy and lack integrity in the first place. The Independent reported that several of the bombers were trained by the CIA to fight in the Afghan war, and that the CIA admitted partial responsibility for the bombings. Ron Kuby, defense attorney, said concerning the 1993 World Trade Center bombing, quote, The mastermind of the 1993 WTC bombing is the government of the United States. It was a phony government-engineered conspiracy to begin with, and it would never have amounted to anything had the government not planned it.